Welcome to Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Bail Amendment Bill passed in Lower House of Representatives. Citizens to access 216-room teaching hospital from February 1, 2014. National Security Minister meets with Chairman of the National Carnival Commission. Thank you for joining us. The Bail Amendment Bill is expected to decrease the murder rate while at the same time work as an incentive for citizens to come forward to report crimes. National Security Minister Gary Griffith laid the case in the lower house on Friday. Sittings in the lower house resumed for the year with a debate on the Bail Amendments Bill 2013 continuing in the lower house. The bill was introduced by Attorney General Annan Romlogan SC on November 13 last year. Contributing to the debate on the bill in the lower house, National Security Minister Gary Griffith says the bill looks at barring bail for persons who have committed offences within the past 10 years. This, Mr. Speaker, allows that trust. It gives the citizen that opportunity to know, listen, this man has been found guilty with a firearm, a deadly weapon, within ten, a 10-year period. Here, I, if I know that I have seen him with a deadly weapon again, I know that I can now make that call. I could go to the law enforcement agencies and I know that if and when that man is, is arrested, he is not going to be released and come after me because I have now reported him. And that is how important this bill is, Mr. Speaker. It, allow, it gives the citizen that opportunity to pass on that information and not be concerned that there's going to be some type of reprisal killing because he or she have, they have done their job as a law by this citizen to help the, um, the, the police service, Mr. Speaker. An important aspect of the bill is putting a stop to criminals who have a tendency to relapse into illegal acts after serving time. The deterrent is lost when someone knows that he can commit a crime with a firearm, be found guilty, and then he knows that he can do the same thing knowing fully well that if he's caught, he can very well get bail the very same day with, with a firearm or raping someone. And that, Mr. Speaker, is when it is that we have to look at the elements to, for the reduction of recidivism in this country. A bill such as this will ensure that that recidivism rate is, is reduced. It cannot be reduced if we allow criminals that commit hacks such as these to get that get-out-of-jail-free card, that they can have possession of a firearm. But more so, the minister says the aim is to give citizens a sense of security after doing their civic duty of reporting a crime. I am asking us for us to look at the victim. Let us stop always trying to find mechanisms to support the felon, support the criminal. It is time we start looking after the well-being of the victim. And this is what I ask, Mr. Speaker. The bill was passed in the House early Saturday morning. A special majority of 26 votes was required for it to pass and receive the full support of all 27 members of Parliament, MPs, from the government benches. Kimberam Kalawan, News 4. In other news, from February 1, 2014, citizens will be able to access a number of outpatient services at the San Fernando Teaching Hospital, which was recently handed over. The hospital has a total of over 360,000 square feet of usable space and boasts of modern facilities and conveniences. This is the Skywalk, which bridges the San Fernando General Hospital and the San Fernando Teaching Hospital. It is expected to service thousands of citizens and help reduce the backlog in the health sector. Signed, sealed, delivered. This was the theme of the handover ceremony of the San Fernando Teaching Hospital. It was a landmark achievement for the government as it delivered the hospital to citizens of Trinidad and Tobago 18 months after Prime Minister the Honorable Kamla Pisad Bisesa SC assured that the 18-floor edifice would serve better as a medical treatment and learning institution. It was Dr. Gopi Singh, Shiva Gopi Singh, and Dr. Lakra Bodo who said, Kamla, why don't you all convert this facility from what it was supposed to be for office space into a decanting center, that was the original idea, a decanting center, and then from that it grew. So I want to thank the doctors of San Fernando. The idea came from the doctors in San Fernando. And rightly so, because they were the ones who would have been practicing, they would have known more than any of us the possibilities, the potential. The 261-bed hospital adds to the existing stock at the General Hospital and the Honorable Prime Minister believes the VAT exclusive $739.6 million spent on the entire conversion and retrofitting was money well spent. 
But we took 18 months to do this at about the same kind of cost for 216 beds here for the facilities we saw up on the screen, the equipment and the teaching aspects of it. And Dr. Kant tells me the cost is about the same as we spent for the 120 beds in Scarborough, the Scarborough Hospital, which took how many years? Remind me? 11, 11 years. So something great is happening in Trinidad and Tobago. The complex has been dedicated to maternal, childcare and pediatric outpatients where improved services and quality care will be dispersed. The infants who would soon occupy these beds would have the vision of the Prime Minister to thank for it. There are 26 doctors on call rooms to ensure care personnel are always available to patients and that the medical team is comfortable. Meanwhile, lecture rooms have been specifically designed for teaching and interactive learning as the institution leads the region in attracting the best minds and expertise in the medical field. The San Fernando Teaching Hospital was built to 17 North American and UK codes and standards and provides a range of first-class medical features which were installed to improve hygiene and sanitary conditions at the hospital while reducing levels of hospital infections. Subsequently, the Austrian government proposed to finance, construct, and outfit the project via the government government arrangement. One of Austria's major healthcare expert companies, Vamed, was selected by the government of Austria to retrofit from office space to this 216 inpatient world-class facility. And we want to thank their CEO for coming. Thank you, Andrea. In addition to Vamed of Austria, the project was managed by Exectech and several local subcontractors mobilized on, and they mobilized on site and started the retrofitting of the base building in April 2012. I am pleased to report to the construction sector that this government-to-government -government arrangement saw approximately 95% local input and labor. 95%. The Utica chairman said while many may criticize the Trinidad and Tobago work ethic, she reported that the locals worked hard and diligently on the site. Following a tour of the San Fernando Hospital complex, the Honorable Prime Minister shared her thoughts. It's very, very impressive and, and certainly designed for comfort and great health care. Um, they've catered to every kind of need you can think of, um, but at the same time the environment is very appealing, very soothing. Um, the colors are very nice. The, the glass, a lot of glass that you can get this evening. It's a great place. They've done a fantastic job. With Prime Minister, the Honourable Kamala Pisabi Sessa, once again making good on her promise to construct hospitals around the country, citizens of San Fernando and by extension the country can be proud of a developing health sector. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Thank you very much, Nikolai. When we come back, reassurances of a safe carnival 2014. Stay with us. The Ministry of National Security and the National Carnival Commission are but two bodies pursuing a safe carnival 2014. Recently, both parties began a series of meetings that are aimed at citizen security during this festive season. A safe, secure and comfortable carnival 2014 is envisaged for citizens and foreigners in Trinidad and Tobago. On Wednesday, Minister of National Security, Senator the Honorable Gary Griffith, met with Chairman of the National Carnival Commission, Alison Dimas, at the National Operations Center to discuss safety and security issues relevant to Carnival 2014. Also in attendance at the meeting were the Mayor of Port of Spain, His Worship Raymond Timkey, Director of the National Operations Center, Commander Gavin Hira, and his team, Chief Fire Officer Mr. Naya Rambasad and other senior fire officers, senior members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and other key members involved in the planning of Carnival. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss plans for traffic control, secured routes in cases of an emergency, the positioning of tactical units and venue operation centers in and around Port of Spain as well as other important security measures. Also discussed were issues such as illegal vending which contributes to crime, the flow of bans and other congestions, waste disposal and cleanup, signage and notifications of toilet and other public facilities. These meetings will continue on a weekly basis at other venues throughout the country leading up to Carnival in order to coordinate the efforts of all relevant authorities. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. 
Trinidad and Tobago is on its way to achieving the Millennium Development Goals set out by the United Nations. The eight Millennium Development Goals range from cutting extreme poverty rates in half to halting the spread of HIV AIDS and providing universal primary education, all to be achieved by 2015. On the heels of the government releasing a report which details this country's progress towards achieving the Millennium Development Goals, a group of civil organizations says much more can be done to ensure Trinidad and Tobago achieves these goals. The goals set out by the United Nations form a blueprint agreed to by all the world's countries and all the world's leading development institutions. Social activist Hazel Brown says despite the decent progress made in achieving those goals, the role of civil society in the attainment of these goals should not be underestimated. The UN has started in the last three years a process of determining what is going to happen with development post-2015. And Trinidad and Tobago is not an insignificant player in this process. In fact, Trinidad and Tobago is part of a UN high-level um, group, which has been established by the UN to develop what happens with the, prog the, 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 the agenda for development post-2015. So our views are going to be fed into that and we are not satisfied that civil society is sufficiently engaged by the government in whatever they are going to take to the, to the UN. So we had to establish that we have a view and that the view is objective. It is not for or against the government. It simply assesses from a broad civil society perspective what is the, what is the situation with MDGs in Trinidad and Tobago. Ms. Brown adds that while good progress has been made against some goals, such as ensuring all children receive and complete, at minimum, a primary school education and equality between the genders in schools, there are some areas which still worry civil society organizations. And we say that poverty and hunger remains continuing concerns in Trinidad and Tobago, despite its high income status, and we see that you media people see the level of poverty in Trinidad and Tobago every day. Over 20% of people are assessed as living below the poverty line. 8 to 11% of the population are, re are reported to be undernourished. Ms. Brown emphasizes that another serious issue which must be looked at is the gender wage gap. According to the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago figures, the average income for a male in Trinidad and Tobago is $18,000 TT dollars, and the average income for a woman in Trinidad and Tobago is $9,000. The reason for that substantial gap, of course, is because more women are in the low-paid jobs in Trinidad and Tobago, so that, the, the, it bring, that brings the average down, and women and men, so that if, if we are to close the gap, so things have to be done about the levels of income, especially the issues at the bottom in relation, for example, to minimum wage. At the present minimum wage, the, the wage gap will not be, be reduced. Other issues which Ms. Brown says need to be addressed include this country's high infant mortality rate of 24%, a figure which is the third highest in the Caribbean, Haiti and Guyana being the only two countries with a higher infant mortality rate. Gregory McBurney, News 4. It is expected that the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Tobago branch will soon get a boost in its resources, all geared towards an increased police visibility on the island and to ultimately assist in Tobago crime fighting plans. This word after the first meeting between the Minister of National Security and the Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. A new fleet of police vehicles should be in Tobago shortly to assist in crime fighting on the island. We did get a commitment that uh, Within the next month or so, there would be uh, new vehicles sent to Tobago, and um, that that aspect, vehicles would be we would be well 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 treated, and that there should be an adequate supply. And not only will there be an adequate supply, but um, provisions will be made for uh, more more effective maintenance. The amount which was not confirmed came as a request from the Scarborough Police Station. What I also was unable to give the Chief Secretary is the exact numbers. Um, there was a request made by the, the, the command, police command in Tobago in relation to um, vehicle fleet support. Uh, we are fulfilling the full extent of the request. 
Um, the exact numbers I would not be able to give you, but what I can assure you, it will in fact provide Tobago with um, extremely high coverage of marked police vehicles. An additional set of SRP and regular police officers will be added to the service, some by February and the others later in the year, as promised by Minister Griffith, to increase the level of manpower in Tobago. Construction on the proposed police station for Roxborough and the new Old Grange station will not happen until the month of June. But we are hoping that that particular deadline will be met. We did express our disappointment at the continued delay, but at least this time around, uh, we're hoping that the, the timelines which were put forward at those timelines are met. The K-9 unit, which is up and running for years in Trinidad, will be introduced in Tobago as well. We also look at a number of other um, issues dealing with security of the port, um, the, the, the concept of a K-9 unit, uh, situations pertaining to immigration, um, security of the airports. Minister Griffith assured Tobagonians that the meetings would turn into action and that effective policing will be the aim of the officers in Tobago. Reporting from Tobago, Natoya Johnson, News 4. Squad is on the other side of the break. Stay with us. The Trinidad and Tobago women's under-20 team created history in the Cayman Islands on Sunday by becoming the first national women's team to advance to the final four of a CONCACAF tournament. The Soka princesses defeated the home team and secured a place in the semi-final with one group match still to play. The News 4 sports crew is in Grand Cayman for the tournament and we have more in this Wayne Cunningham report from the Truman Barton Stadium. News 4 Sports at the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship, courtesy the Ministry of Sport and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago. History was created in Grand Cayman on Sunday when the Trinidad and Tobago National Under-20 Women's Team became the first women's outfit to qualify for the Final Four in a CONCACAF tournament. In Game 2, Trinidad and Tobago faced the host nation in front of a passionate home crowd. The Caymans were hammered in their opener versus Mexico, and needed a win to stay on course for a coveted semi-final spot. But Anik Walker and her crew also had some support with a small TNT contingent in the crowd, which outnumbered the Caymans with noise throughout the match. Those supporters were rewarded as early as this second minute, when Chenisa Cameo banged one past Christian Simo in the Cayman goal. TNT did not step off the gas, and the Kamanians came under intense pressure in the early stages. That pressure caused goal number two, as the efforts to clear the ball resulted in Jelena Bowden own goal in the 18 minutes. The locals held off the Soka princesses and were hoping for a two-goal deficit going in at the half. That hope was dashed in the 41st minute, as Khadija Deviset climbed above all to score a brilliant header for goal number three. 3-0, the score at halftime. TNT started the second half just as they did the first, with a goal. Captain Anik Walker with number four. Despite numerous chances, and I mean numerous, 4-0 was how the match ended, mainly due to the Eurex of Seymour in the Cayman goal. Anik Walker was a just player of the match, and we now await Mexico in the final game of the group stage, but we have already qualified for the semi-final of the 2014 CONCACAF Under-20 Women's Championship. I'm Wayne Cunningham from Grand Cayman for News 4 Sports. When we come back, we focus on Tobago. Stay with us. A 15-year-old literacy training institution in Tobago is about to expand its curriculum to better prepare adults for the world of work. Thanks to the Ministry of Tobago Development, who recently assisted them with their development through their NGO support unit. Several persons in Tobago are still incapable of reading and writing, even in their adult stage. This according to Executive Officer of the Tobago Institute of Literacy, Ms. Suzanne Sandiford. 
this problem is termed as illiteracy and can affect one's day-to-day -day activities since most of what we do daily has some form of reading and writing to it. This deficiency affects how a person manages employment tasks that require basic reading and writing skills. Ms. Sandy Ford said the institute has been in existence for almost 15 years and has been training adults to properly read and write. The main thrust is to teach those who fell through the cracks. She continued that some persons left school without adopting these basic skills necessary for self-development. Many, many people on this island over the years left school very early for whatever reasons. Some of them finished school not quite understanding reading or the getting into reading. So we are touching those people. She further explained the very simple process one must go through to start learning at the institute. So our doors are open, they come in, they are assessed, and we put them through our training. She stated that a qualified lecturer, graduate of the University of the West Indies, trained the students, ensuring that when they leave the institute, they are ready to take over the world, as some would have either learned the basic reading and writing skills, while others would have further enhanced what they already knew. But that is not all that has been happening at the Tobago Institute of Literacy. In fact, the organization is about to expand by incorporating technology in the form of computers to its curriculum. We need to purchase some computers because we want to expand the program to teach the adults how to use computers. The Institute, among others, were granted checks by the Ministry of Tobago Development to assist them with purchasing those computers. Ms. Sandy Ford said one of the aims of the Institute is to dispense literacy across the entire island. The Tobago Institute of Literacy is located in the capital of Tobago and is open to any adult willing to enhance their literacy skills. In 2013, as was reported in a local newspaper, Education Ministry Chief Education Officer Harilal Sicharan noted that from the studies conducted by the Program for International Student Assessment, reading had been identified as an issue in this country, especially at the primary school level. He predicted, however, that with the present initiatives in literacy and numeracy, the level should increase. He believes that by the time we get around to the next study in 2016, Trinidad and Tobago should be ranking above the international mean and should begin competing with the developed countries in terms of reading literacy. Reporting from Tobago, Patricia Nicholson, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you so much for joining us.